the mind has been running around all morning. Give it a chance to settle down. Give it a good place to settle down. You can stay with the breath. Be aware of the breath coming in, the breath going out. And in again, out again. Notice if it's comfortable. Experiment for a while to see what kind of breathing would feel best right now. Don't let the process become mechanical, because you're trying to increase your sensitivity as you meditate. That's where your discernment is going to come from. You become sensitive to little things happening in the mind that you didn't notice before. And to train yourself to notice those little things, you start out by noticing little things in the breath. When it's too long, how do you know it's too long? Too short, too heavy, too light? How do you judge these things? Because that's the other part of gaining discernment, which is you develop your powers of judgment as to what connects with what and what's better than what. To start with something simple like the breath. You notice where breathing is comfortable, but it's putting you to sleep. Okay, you've got to change. Try to find the right balance. And as you're engaged in the present moment like this, you don't even have to think about putting away the hindrances. You don't have to think about putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, as the Buddha said. If you find something really interesting right here, it can gather your attention, absorb your attention. and sensitize you to lots of things you were not sensitive to before. So it takes some time. And be very careful about how you breathe in, how you breathe out, and how you relate to the breath. The mind can get a chance to settle down. And when it's settled down, things begin to get clearer and clearer inside. And you start asking the right questions. Where is there still some stress in here? What can I do to put an end to it? That, the Buddha said, was the central message of his teaching. And you start noticing simple things like this with the breath, and then from there it goes into the mind. The other day I was listening to someone say that the breath teaches you all about inconstancy, stress, not self. All you need to know about the depth of the Dharma is there in the breath. It's not in the breath. It's in the mind. But we use the breath as a way of last swing the mind into the present moment, making it more sensitive developing its powers of judgment, and giving it strength, because the mind needs a sense of well-being in order to stay here. And as you work with the breath, you make it a better place to stay, so the mind can be more solidly here, and as, as it's more solid, it can see connections it would have missed otherwise. So gather around the breath. And it'll have a lot to teach you, not only about the breath, but also about the mind. I had some students of a Tibetan teacher come one time and complain, how can you focus on the breath as your meditation? Because when you die, the breath is going to leave you. Well, when you're focusing on the breath, we're not just looking at the breath, we're looking at the whole process of fabrication, how the mind talks to itself, the perceptions it uses, the feelings it focuses on. And these, of course, are going to be big issues when you die. As you get more sensitive to these things, you realize the breath is there to ground you, so you can learn about the mind directly. But first you learn about the mind dealing with the breath. So give the breath your full attention for the time being, and see what it has to teach you. <laughs>